Amidst all the doom and gloom that is Tekken 8, I try to provide information and analysis that can hopefully keep the game interesting. I think that there's certainly a lot to complain about, but there's a lot of the game that's still really fun to look at and play. So, why not start with countering the downplay? that surrounds Steve Fox. Steve Fox is a character that dominated almost every game he's been in in the past. And uh, Tekken 8 appears to be the exception. Of course, Tekken 8 is a completely different game than Tekken 7. So I'm of the belief that we need to see how the meta evolves. We need to see how players uh, get a handle on the game and figure out how this game works in particular. And Numan Chowdhury, I thought it was Numan Counterhit when I looked at his name, which was a fitting name for a Steve player. Numan Chowdhury seems to have done that, piloting Steve to top two to the grand final of this Pakistan dojo. 154 entrants in arguably the strongest region in the world currently. How did this happen? Well, we see that Farzeen, a former Akuma player, is on the other side of the bracket. If you don't care about any of this, by the way, timestamps below to jump to the analysis uh, or the match itself. Um... Numan and Farzin, all the way through the winner's bracket. What about the heavy hitters that we're used to seeing? Well, Arslan got sent to the loser's bracket in his pool against Hamza Gafur. Uh, this was a mirror match uh, between two Azusenas, Harslan and Hamza. And uh, it went down to the wire, you know, 3-1 in the uh, third game. Uh, Arslan and I believe most of the world-class players in Tekken 7 still have a lot of adjusting to do. So I'm not surprised currently that it's a bit difficult to adjust to Tekken 8. And Arslan still made it to the top 16. Unfortunately, he lost to Kasimir, another very, very strong Pakistani player. All of these Pakistani players are so strong, bro. Um, and then Hafiz uh, Tanvir lost to Numan in his pool and then also got eliminated in top 16. So I believe Arslan and Tanvir were probably two of the big favorites to win the entire uh, tournament. Unfortunately, going out in the top 16, and now in the grand final, we have Numan versus Farzine. So, very, very exciting to see new faces dominate. Um, and it, once you watch the gameplay, you'll see, I don't think it's that um, they scrubbed out these other players. I think that their, their styles probably fit this game more initially. And I think that the world-class players from the last game, once they make some adjustments, we'll see some really good gameplay. But the game isn't about the world-class players, it's about the current players. So let's check this out. Steve versus Victor. We're going to do some analysis on the matchup, and then we'll look at the games themselves. Now, you're probably here because you're wondering, what's the big deal with Steve? He's supposed to be terrible. That's what everybody on Reddit told me. <laughs> so Steve, obviously, can't talk about Steve without talking about back one. 13-frame <clears throat> counter hit high safe. Although there is a bug right now that just holding back and going into stance doesn't make it safe. They haven't addressed it, so maybe it's intentional. But uh, back one with the uh, proper cancels is safe. But at a high level, everybody knows that back one is coming. So how do you play when your back ones won't hit? That's probably the main concern most players have. Although realistically, if you're watching this video and you play a lot of online ranked, your back ones are still going to hit. But it's worth considering uh, once you get higher and higher and higher and fight good defenders, how do you win with just the threat of back one? That'll become obvious as we watch the gameplay. But the main basic idea is you have a, a few other ways, right? Forward movement becomes your attack. If you attack with forward movement, your opponent is feeling pressure, right? Because you're, you're running at them. And they, the, the way you counter somebody running at you in Tekken is you try to hit them. You keep them out, right? Because they're not blocking. Might as well hit them. However, swinging into Steve is always scary. So when you play forward movement as an attack, again, don't do this at low level because people are just going to mash into you, right? Just throw your back one. But at high level, when you throw forward movement as an attack, your opponent is incentivized to hit a button. And the more you incentivize to hit your button, the better back one becomes. Aside from that, your opponent is going to try to play when back one isn't a threat, and that opens up new counter hit windows. Say, for example, you always do run up back one, run up back one. Your opponent knows to chill out when you run up, right? As a visual example here, check out this, right? So if every time I do run up back one, it becomes a bit obvious, right? But what if I do run up and do a slower button? Suddenly, my opponent might think that they have a chance to hit me, and then they can't. And that's where moves like Flicker 2, which you will see a lot, and uh, moves like Ducking Forward 2 come in, right? Your opponent tries to retaliate at a time where back one isn't a threat. They run the risk of dying to another move. And that is what high-level Steve looks like, is showing other timings and other speed buttons, right? And then there are a few new things, right? This Tekken 8 specific things. One that you'll see that Numan loves to use uh, is outfox the up back three uh, back dash it's kind of like a 
Fangs can post stance. It puts him into Lionheart, huge evasive window, and it's kind of Steve's quickest access to a whiff punish launcher because Sonic Fang isn't a launcher. Um, very, very strong option, and uh, Steve can duck cancel out of it to avoid getting punished. Aside from that, there's some anti-Victor things that are pretty important. So Victor's strongest moves, probably his armor move, uh, back 1 plus 2, and uh, his expulsion, the up 1 plus 2, and then his 1 plus 2 counter hit after running 2, right? So running 2 into 1 plus 2 is extremely scary. How does Steve counter this? Well, Steve has a few moves that are really, really strong against the armor move. So for example... Down 2-1 and QCF2 are Steve's main lows, and they both will go under Victor's armor. So that's really, really powerful. The other thing that Numan uses that I was very surprised by is he uses down back 1 plus 2, Steve's armor move. It looks very, very slow, and you'll see it in the match, so I'm not going to show it right now. But it ends up working really well because it covers sidestep button. Victor is a very is more built on probably timing and movement than just straight up mix-ups because his lows aren't that scary, right? So because Victor is delaying his timing a lot, Steve not only has a counter hit window chance, but also a uh, sidestep chance, right? He has a lot of chances to outplay Victor's buttons. But if he's not confident in the read of what Victor's specifically going to do, whether it's like sidestep button, sidestep armor, or just immediate armor, Steve can play his own armor, which covers immediate buttons and delayed buttons because it's so slow. Very surprising use of the move. You'll see it in the match. Of course... We can't talk about all of this without talking about Victor's strengths. Victor, probably an underwhelming character compared to what we expected early on, but still very, very, very good. And in this matchup in particular, he has such good counterplay to Steve's high counter hits. 1-2-1, one, one, back 1, and flicker jabs are Steve's main moves to beat... Uh, well, they're his main counter hit tools and kind of control buttons, right? Victor's down back 4 is a counter hit launcher that will blow these up. Even though it's launch punishable, Steve, you have to consider that Steve is looking to use these moves. So if Steve is looking to use these moves, Victor can answer with down back four. On top of that, Victor's main offensive tool is his full crouch game, which is already, by default, starting out going underneath these highs. It's also, Steve would normally counter this with down forward two, but Steve's down forward two is so nerfed, the hitbox is a bit harder to hit, it doesn't track as much anymore, that sidestep full crouch is very viable to beat Steve. In addition, even though Steve's 1 to 1 is so strong against armor, there's this unique situation where Victor will evade 1 to 1 if Steve is at plus. So if Steve does jab 1 to 1, it for some reason will evade, right? If, you're, if Steve's at minus, he can do this really cool tech where he does uh, 1 to 1 back sway and then, you know, launch. So that's always a threat. But if Steve's at plus, he loses that. So that's a weird quirk of the Victor matchup. That makes 1 to 1 a lot harder to use, and 1 to 1 is one of Steve's best tools. And then finally, one thing to note is that against good tech and defense, uh, Victor's stance is actually not that, not that good. And you'll see it come into play in this match. There we go. Talked about it enough. Let's actually start analyzing. All right. Grand Finals, first to three. Steve versus Victor. Immediately, what is the first thing we see, right? Count, uh, flicker back two. And it looks like it just caught, uh, it just caught the back dash, right? But assuming that Farzine was ducking looking for back one, it's already a good answer. We see a flicker back two here. And when you're re analyzing replays, by the way, it's good to start at why do moves hit in the first place, right? So why did this flicker back two hit? I don't have a good answer for you. I think Farzine ducked and tried to do a full crouch mix up. Yeah, like he tried to do uh, while rising one two or while rising one plus two, which is both hits. Um, and that's why he got hit. And then immediately you see Numan hit an outfox Lionheart two. And this is huge. This is great new Steve tech that I think Steve players are going to have to get used to using. Look at how this hits. He spaces at range three, three back dashes away. And he anticipates that uh, Farzine is going to play the running two. He's already outfoxing at this point before Farzine even does the move. And look at the tight spacing on that. He's barely out of range. Very, very well played from Numan. They played in the winner's final right before this, by the way. So there's clearly some past data at play. But, um... A very impressive user. Now, this is an ugly situation. His back's to the wall. He's just moving, though. And this is a great way to get out of the wall. Aside from getting thrown here, no notice how he doesn't put out any buttons. He doesn't get counter hit. He's just slowly sidewalking off the wall. Plays an armor move, gets grabbed. Good answer from Farzine. But now, Numan is in a great position. Sonic Fang, chip damage, final mix-up. This is so good. If he just goes for a low poke here, he doesn't kill, right? Unless it's QCF2. So even if Farzine goes for the expulsion, the up 1 plus 2, uh he would die. So he goes for the mix-up that would at least kill. 
And I like that choice, right? And it's the first round, it's the first game, you know, you can afford to lose a round being wrong in a 50-50. Lost anyone plus two, nice. This is really, really good from Numan again. So Victor here is minus eight. In Tekken 8, you really want to take your frames, right? So he does wall rising one plus two, and then he does one plus two. Victor's minus eight here. Numan plays immediately QCF1. No delay, right? Now, technically, if Farzine did his armor move right away, it would have worked, right? Because armor comes out frame seven. Uh, minus eight, frame seven, 15 frames. But because Farzine backdashed, he spent his frames and got hit uh, while attempting to do the armor move. And now Steve's in heat. Armor move does not pay off this time. Sidewalk left from Victor into a down forward two. Nice little combo. Nice. He, this was really, really good. So Farzine is playing running two, but he's not doing anything after. He's just playing the frame advantage and seeing what Numan does. Numan does a down jab here and then just stays down. Whiff punishes the armor move, blows his heat early. If you look at the situation right before, I know I'm rewinding a lot, but I think this is really important to pay attention to. If you look at it, he still has half a meat, uh, half a meat bar. <laughs> half a heat meter bar. <laughs> and uh, he blows it right away on this whiff punish. And now Farzine's in heat. This is a tough decision to make. I don't think this is very good. Clearly, though, it didn't matter. Clearly, though, with the heat disadvantage, he plays ducking forward two into ducking forward two again. Farzine tried to challenge with forward four. Gets blown up. And this is what I'm talking about, where when you are looking for back one, you are, by consequence, g playing into different timings naturally and steve can look for those and find counter hits and the double ducking forward two is a great uh, great example of that given it is from a stance but the idea is that most steve players aren't going to do the double forward two by default so uh by by expecting that the steve he's playing around the idea that the steve player will just do one hit and then start retreating and backdashing again right farzine is looking for a window to play the game again Right, because if you just respect Steve's back one the whole time, you're never playing the game, right? So in order to get damage, to get the kill, to even get a lead, you have to find a time to play the game. He expects that this is his chance, and he's wrong. And that is how high-level Steve works. That was a mouthful. It took a while, but I was trying to explain how even if you're not hitting back ones, Steve, you can as Steve, you can find opportunities. And at a high level, you kind of have to. Now he's playing out Fox again at this distance. He's getting poked up a little bit. Spacing at this distance is nice, because if Farzine is bad with his running two, he gets killed. All right, and Farzine has a great answer here. This is the main complaint of Steve players. It's why they think he's so bad. Um, and it is a, it is not very good that this is a thing. Steve goes into Lionheart, and armor beats every option. There are a few exceptions where this doesn't apply. Uh, Heat Smash is one of them. Um, I think while standing 2-2, two, two, but off of back, off of back 1-2 specifically, um, and most Lionheart transitions, including the Stomp, uh, you are stuck as Steve. You don't get to do a stance mix-up if they do the armor. So Steve has to cancel it with a dash, uh, using his ducking move, not a dash, his stance, the ducking in. And uh, we'll see Numan try that as time goes on. But he switches his punish instead of doing back 1-2 now, he does 2-1. Two, 2-1, one. Two, one, nice, and then plays a peekaboo mix-up, does the whole string, uh, Farzine just blocks. Side step one plus two hits. Okay. He, oh my god. How did he get hit by the expulsion? I didn't, he, he burst, right? So usually he dashes up. Oh, he tries to jab. He does a preemptive run up jab. That is so unfortunate. Beautiful time, Ming, for Victor there. Okay, Sonic Fang. This was a fascinating situation. So we looked at this in the lab, actually. So after this, Peekaboo down forward 1-2. Steve is minus 6. Why did Victor get counter hit by 1-2-1 here? Right? Farzine did a sidestep jab, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me if you're minus 6. You can just take your frames. In fact, if Steve does immediate 1-2-1 here, Victor has a nasty situation he can play. This is realistically just kind of like... A default like oh my opponent's gonna swing i'm gonna sidestep and then attack but in tekken 8 taking your frames is really important right just play the frame advantage you have so after this there's a cool situation victor can do all right check this out so i have victor set to do um a preset sequence so after he blocks this he's gonna do down 
down four into this, right? So after I down forward one, two like this, if I jab, I get counter hit. We trade, okay? Look at this. Oh, I missed. The VDX will figure it out. Jab, oh my god, I messed up. Right, jab, trade, and that's guaranteed because uh, Victor is plus 15, right? If Steve does a button that isn't a jab, he gets counter hit. So the reason why that's so strong is, uh, is because it suddenly means that Steve can no longer just do these strings for free, right? If Victor is just going to frame trap him playing the frame advantage, now Numan has to be so much more careful. That gives, that gives Victor a new opportunity to play more attacks. Um, the reason why Victor can't down forward two there, by the way, is because of the spacing. Uh, at that spacing, Victor gets his 16 frame hitbox instead of the 15 frame one. So it's a small, this is a niche situation, right? Nobody's thinking about this in tournament. So you'd have to lab this in advance. And realistically, they're flow stating so hard that that wouldn't happen. But I thought it was worth noting just because it would have killed Steve here. If um, a, like a, I think a year or two years down the road, maybe even three, Victor specialists will be aware of the situation and be ready for it. But this is, you know, month two of a game. Nobody's ready for that yet. He's enraged, though. I'm liking what I'm seeing. All right, back one plus two. Attempted whiff punish does not pay off. Oh, look at be able to get this round. Both guys in heat. They have Both guys in heat. Both guys in rage. And they, this is so smart. Oh, my God. That is so unfortunate. So, Steve Steve was being super smart here. All right, Numan was being pretty smart. He's playing the lows that would go under the armor that would kill him. Farzine reads him. And the, the crazy part is we labbed this situation, too. This backsway fails for Victor if Steve delays his button ever so slightly at all. But the Pakistanis are so sharp that Steve is playing this. He buffered this. He does it immediately as soon as his character is actionable. And in that situation only does the backswing win. And I'm pretty sure with the amount of time that these guys played the game, they both knew that that was a, that was a potential interaction. Very, very impressive stuff. Okay, look at that. Oh my goodness. How did this happen? So heat engage. Let's back up to the heat engage and look at this. While standing two, one, two. This down, this sidestep was uh, really, really uh, ill-advised by Numan. Victor just hit a one, two, which puts him at plus eight, right? When the one, two jab hits, Victor's at plus eight. I could not find the frame there, so let's check this out. All right, while standing one, two. If you try to sidestep here, you're cooked. Down two basically becomes homing. Right. So that's why he gets hit. Running two hits now. But the weave right dodges the stance. Missed opportunity. There's the armor move. Very, very nice. Plays the mid. Okay. 4 4 2, no punish. And chalk it up to first game nerves. Nice. Outfox again. Paying off. Very, very, very good use of the new stance tool so even though lionheart is kind of underwhelming right even though lionheart is kind of underwhelming numan is making it work especially with that stance i think that's very very impressive i think it's very very impressive game two they go to the secluded training ground this stage is more interesting too because as the walls break uh Steve is forced to play on an infinite and Steve likes walls, right? Because his mix-up becomes you can't backdash his stomp anymore. So Wow, what did Numan do here? He just whiffed a back two. clean whiff punish from Farzine taking it to the wall It's in Farzine's interest as I was saying to break the wall So that's why he does the immediate wall combo instead of the slightly delayed one for the grounded scaling He gives up some damage, but gets a more open stage Okay, we get a chance here. There it is again. This is the Steve weakness in this game. Why Lionheart is not very good. He does a right weave one two, forced into Lionheart. And even though Numan cancels it with the duck, he must have hit a button or not held back fast enough because the armor. Farzine does this armor by default. It's like the layer one. I just want to beat Lionheart, right? But for some reason, Numan gets hit. Eats the low heat smash, breaks the wall. Great stage awareness from Farzine, but the combo doesn't convert. What happened here must have been a must have been must have been a directional misinput. Uh, that's unfortunate. I think I don't know if you could get the kill off of that. The wall was in a weird situation. Uh, armor move from distance. Steve is whiffing. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. 
Okay. Full crouch move from Victor. Uh-oh. Numan is mashing a lot more than he was before. Which isn't the end of the world, right? He's getting killed for it right now. But Farzine is having to play around that in a certain way. It can lead to back one opportunities later. At least Numan is dying for making a decision. And I think in this game, that's really, really important. Even if you're wrong, making a decision and a read can set you up for better reads later. Although he's getting blown up right now. Good armor choice here. Like, like there's not a lot Steve can do to stop this. At this point, right here, Steve spins in, right? But the best, the only way Steve can like come back from the situation is he ducks heart as a hard read and launches you. But uh, Numan trying to fight back for momentum. Farzine reads it and just goes for the armor move. All right, so Numan chills out a bit, right? <laughs> Farzine shoots the gun and nice whiff punish. Uh oh, peekaboo down forward too. A little combo. This is big. See how the walls matter so much for Steve? He does that wall combo to get the wake up situation here. So because the axis is off, he can't do the machine gun punches, right? He's gonna he's gonna drop the combo. So instead he goes for the wall standing one two, the wild man, and then he plays forward dashes and then he gets the grounded hit. Ends up getting more damage. That was a perfect punish. Victor's up one one is minus fourteen. He gets a sonic fang into heat dash into down two. Now he's in like a last two hit situation. Steve has to stomp here to kill, so it's gonna be a few a couple hits. Nice duck from Farzine, no punish. Uh oh, ducks the wall running too. 1-2-1, one, one. QCF1, lots of hitboxes coming out, stays in frame, nice, this is cool, so, Numan takes his minus 8, just does a mid right away, right, Farzine's just blocking, so now he does a forward dash, and then flicker 2, right, if Farzine's just gonna block, at least let me play a different timing, find a counter hit, get some chip damage, although in rage the chip damage isn't a lot, right, and then now same situation, or same situation here, now he plays forward dash, forward dash, threatening a back one or something, uh, continuing the pressure, ducks in and then does a low. It's a lot of work playing Steve, for sure. But this is all built on the threat of back one killing. And if you can leverage this, you can make Steve really strong. Ah, he misses the wall standing one too. That would have killed. Victor's in heat now. QCF2. This was so smart. Great awareness. QCF2 going under any armor attempt. If Victor does up one plus two here, he dies. Because Sonic Fang's second hit will anti-air him. So instead of playing any kind of mind game, Numan throws out the counter hit, which ca or throws out the Sonic Fang, and it actually catches Farzine's backdash. So the only way Farzine could win here is if he didn't Korean backdash. He had to do just a completely normal standing backdash and block punish. But Steve has so much HP, it's so low reward. I like that decision a lot from Numan. That's like a Tekken 8 decision you need to make. If you take a block punish, so be it. But you're making a read that can end the game and cover multiple options. I love that. Here we go again. Here we go again. Back one. On hit, ducking in forward two. Counter hits the armor attempt. Changing the windows of time that Farzine is allowed to play the game. Wild man, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, God. And this is really, really nice momentum turnaround from Farzine. Oh, that is nasty. Look at how this all went so wrong. He had a combo. All right, wild man, spring kick. Then, uh, Numan goes for sidestep duck and then probably the full crouch low, right? But Farzine is not having any of that. The immediate spring kick worked, right? And he plays immediate, oh no, he does a sidestep down back four really, really quickly. That counter hits sidestep, if Steve did sidestep back one, it counter hits it. If Steve did sidestep down forward two, probably counter hits it at that speed as well. And as you saw, sidestep low is way too slow. A great read from Farzine to go for the counter hit there. Going into heat here is so smart, as you can see, because now it's just huge chip damage into one more interaction. Very, very nice from Farzine to continue to steal the momentum back and then make that comeback. That might be the Akuma player in him, not going to lie. All right. QCF2. Nice. What I like that Numan is doing is he's went, instead of mashing at round start like he did, he went back to playing this farther distance. Right? He's playing the farther distance where Outfox is now a threat once more. Or forward two. Really good Sonic Fang punish this time on the, uh, sorry. Yeah, good Sonic Fang punish on the forward forward two this time. That was crucially missing from game one. Running two. Immediate timing. Nice. Just playing your frames. Huge duck. Huge. Absolutely huge duck. 
pushes him on the wall. Machine gun fist. Not a weapon. And this is what I was mentioning with the armor. Insane coverage with this armor move. The Gatling gun punches miss. He does he does armor here on an immediate like wake up situation, right? So this this beats so many different things. Armor here beats a mash, right? But Farzeen did sidestep button. And because Steve's move is so slow, it still wins. So it's a nice high coverage option. It would have died to down back four, right? But Farzine just won the last game with it. He just got his uh, down back four blocked in round one there. That's what led to that combo in the first place right here, right? So it makes sense that Farzine would not try that again. So really, really nice read to get this armor move here uh, by Numan. Outfox attempt again. And this is how Numan covers his outfox, right? If he's wrong and there's no whiff, he just ducks forward, cancels into a block. Really effective there. He did a Korean back dash. That's why he got hit. Runs into a down two, running two attempt. Again, Farzee not really playing the frame trap. He just is run, running two and then nothing. Oh boy. Now, I think these right weaves are not very good. It's clearly to cover an immediate timing and it did beat this heat smash here, right? So it's not totally like awful. And he has good wall position, good whiff punish or block punish. But um, yeah, the right weave just doesn't seem to pay off a lot in terms of direct damage. This situation is good though. Farzine stays down and survives a lot. Nice. QCF2 counter hitting the down back four. Nice. That low profiling is paying off. Stomp. Lionheart getting beat out again. Numan not doing the peekaboo cancel, which is surprising to me uh, since he's a Steve specialist, I believe. But he ducks. He didn't duck in. Farzine has shown the armor every single time that he goes into Lionheart. Needs to duck in there. He could have gone under the armor too, but running two. Down forward two, back, running two again, sidestep down two, nice. So Victor's down two is really linear if you're not playing from severe frame disadvantage like when last time we ate the one two. So because they're in neutral here, that sidestep right is really easy to pull off. Small whiff punish. Forward dashes, still breaks the throw. He's paying attention. He's forward dashing, but he's still paying close attention. He's watching for Farzine's reaction. Running two, sidestep down two. Farzine gives up his frames again. This is why the down two isn't tracking. Right? If off plus five, it tracks a bit better. But after sidestep, they're in neutral. Easy sidewalk right. Backswing blow hits again! Nice. Again, Farzine playing all these sidesteps. Numan's just like, no, I'm just going low. Very, very nice. Numan making a great adjustment from the last game where he was. Oh, little flicker back to whiff punish there. Once again. If you get hit, sidestep is hard to pull off. We talk about this in my offensive sidestepping guide. Uh, if you're extremely minus, sidestep is not as effective because moves that didn't track will suddenly track now. He actually tried Steve's weave to the right, but no dice. One, two. Okay, flicker back two. Nice. I love this confidence. He's hitting all these buttons, trying things out. If it doesn't work, that's fine. He's getting Victor to retaliate into him. Even if he can't find a back one, the armor move is clearly working. Heat engage. Stomp. Nice. Heat dash again. Blowing all his heat meter, but look at the situation at the wall. Okay, running two. Back one did not pay off, but that's fine. One, one. Forward movement. That was insane. He did back sway one, which on hit guarantees the Sonic Fang and would have killed. It didn't hit. It happened on block, so he's minus one. But he did the Sonic Fang anyways. Farzine, though, with tight movement, does sidewalk into block. If he kept sidewalking, he would have gotten hit. Uh-oh. Farzine kept it together and finds the running two to kill. No outfox this time. He did an outfox there. Actually, Farzine outplayed his outfox. I didn't even see that. Look at Steve here. Farzine runs up. Steve does outfox in response. It's a reaction to the run-up. But Farzine stopped even closer, reading the outfox, I believe. Goes into full crouch and just hits this while standing move. Then he does running two to chase. Very, very nice from Farzine, adjusting to the outfox spacing. This means Numan, if, if, if Farzine is running up that much, that means Numan can just swing. He can do QCF1, he can do uh, any other mid, really. And he tries it here, right? Instead of spacing out, Numan just tries to throw the QCF1 right away, right? But Farzine is just chilling. Gets a full, oh my goodness. Okay, so Farzine gets the wall standing 1, 2, or 1 plus 2. But the sidestep 2 again, sidestep down 2 again gets eaten by the really slow armor move. Down to one. Steve unique tech here, really, really cool. Down to one into ducking forward, and then he plays the Gatling gun punches to eat up the armor. And because it trades, instead of heat engaging, Farzine doesn't get the heal. Out Fox. Lionheart two, 
Combo video? Oh, yeah, that's so unlucky, man. I think he could have killed. Right? He gets a resplat here. But this Sonic Fang peels him off the wall again. It could have it could have been a combo video to kill. But that's okay. He's the grounded stomp hit, and then uh, this is like a steep stomp. Only hits while grounded, and then just jabs with the plus frames. Farzine does not have enough HP to heat burst and survive. Numan is one game from resetting the bracket. This is very exciting. Steve Fox is doing it to a new Tekken character. The new Tekken characters are usually really OP. Nice punish from Farzine. Saha. Sidestep. Cancel. Into counter hit one plus two. And I really think these weaves are not it, bro. If you look at Steve, what did Steve do? He tried to weave out of the frame disadvantage. And then played the, like the right weave uh, forward two uppercut. A du right weave ducking two, I believe. Oh, and then he gets blown up for it, man. I don't think the I don't think the weaving is is worth it. I don't think it's I don't think it's the move. There he does weave one. It dies to the armor. All of these could have been that power crush. That power crush was working. Dies to the heat burst. Arzine bringing it back. This was a tough one, man. Numan sees the whiff back one, and he's mid back dash right, but he tries to hit a back one to counter hit. Assuming, because most victors will delay it. They'll do the first hit and try to counter hit confirm the second one. But Farzine just ripped the string, probably because he knew it would whiff. So that was a really nice, like, layered mind game there. But here the stance gets blown up. This is why Victor's stance is not that good at high level, right? Off the wake-up situation, Farzine does raw stance. Just nice, calm sidewalk to the left. Back turn punish. Nice combo. Max damage. Wow, the spring kick dodged the QCF1. This is a Steve issue for sure. QCF1 gets evaded by the spring kick. That really sucks. Okay, string. No low parry. Okay, no counter hit. Very nice. Oh, but he got... What was Steve doing? Take bets. He weaved. I do not like the weave, bro. I really don't like the weave. I'm a hater. I think the weave is some... Very niche stuff. It's clearly gotten him killed multiple times this set, right? Like, I would chill on the weave for sure. Backseat gaming, right? I'm not... I'm not in a grand finals of a Pakistan tournament, okay? Obviously, they've been playing for three days. Everybody's flow stating. Nobody's playing their best Tekken. But in my opinion, as an analyst, I think it's not a wise choice. This was really good from Farzine, too. He plays down two, which is zero on block. And then he just jabs right away. With this spacing here off of this down two, right here... Steve can't really do much without whiffing, right? A down forward one will whiff. Uh, the only thing he can try is a QCF one, but uh, Victor can sidestep it too. So the only way Numan can try to get a hit here, and because he's in rate, he's behind, he has no heat, he has to make a comeback. Uh, the only way he can get a hit is by running up. So Farzine reads the run up and just jabs him right away. That's why Farzine does the whole string. He's actually reading the forward movement. He's expecting this to already hit. Yep, and then instead of taking the punish, he does a low, but you know, that's a nerves thing. Very, very nice. Backdash is the back one. You'll see that Numan's not hitting a bunch of back ones, right? So he has to get damage through other means. And this is one of those ways. QCF1, very, very good. Right? Off the flicker back two. Um, Farzine plays this. He plays the wall standing one plus two. Oh my god. <laughs> Numan just whiffed a jab and then threw it out. And Farzine was in his in the middle of his full crouch animation. 4-4-2. 4-4-2. gets a lot of damage even if he doesn't hit a back, hit a back one. Okay. Clips him with the Sonic Fang. Half HP, but no heat. Goes for a grab, which would have beaten a heat burst, which I like. I like that this choice... If Farzine does wake up heat burst, he gets grabbed. Ah! Why? This. I wonder if this was a misinput. Numan does a down back too, which is a very reactable low, right? Very reactable, very slow. On this frame situation, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe he wanted to go under jabs, but Farzine just plays down back four, gets a counter hit, and this is going to be so ugly. Combo still has heat. Ooh, tries to get a different wall situation, I guess. Raw heat burst. Nice. Numan putting out a bunch of... Oh, he didn't believe! Numan is good here. Numan is really good here, putting out a bunch of hitboxes, just trying to stifle Victor. Could have gotten a wall standing 1-2. Survives the heat mode, getting uh, not dying to expulsion. Oh, I think he's slipping. Like, this is good. This is decent. He, he spins in, tries to get a throw. Good duck from Farzine, but... All of his attack no, patterns are failing. The grab counter hits. Farzine can't break it. So he can break it. It's just really hard. Oh, my God, oh but he's... He froze. 
I think Numan should have done what he did game one and gone for the kill, right? Mid or low. You can see Farzine's ducking, but he's playing all this forward movement and amounts to nothing, and then he gets clipped on the way in with down forward 1-1 counter hit. And I think he feels the pressure. He feels the pressure. Farzine has been in this situation before. Numan, I'm sure, has as well. But first dojo, stakes are pretty high, lots of TWT points. Man, this is a stressful situation. I can't say that I would have done different. But definitely would have been good to continue the confidence we saw earlier, right? And here he's, he's back to it. He's back to his uh, flicker twos, playing a lot of moves. Back one again, not getting hit. Farzine again, not getting hit by back one, to clarify. Down back four. Lost any one plus two. Lost any one plus two paying off a lot here. Up one one, just ripping it. They're scrapping. Heat burst. Armor move. Nice duck. While standing 2 2. This is one of the situations where you can actually afford to play your hitbox instead of respecting the armor. But uh, Numan getting, I think, traumatized by getting armored out of Lionheart. Nice grab. Run up down forward one. Heat burst is evaded. Okay, he's still alive. The clinch. The two. He's alive. <laughs> oh my god. One pixel. He had to do this. Um, Farzine had to do the one break. The one break does less, dam less damage initially, but because you could do Sonic Fang into a... Uh, you could do Sonic Fang into Heat Dash, uh, you have to break two here. Although I don't know if Steve had enough meter. Steve might not have had enough meter to actually do the Sonic Fang Heat Dash cancel. So maybe he did need to do the two for max damage. At this point, I doubt they're thinking, like, like this is, again, month two, brand new Tekken game. They're not optimized to think about the meter that way, right? It's very, very fast-paced. They're still just playing the Tekken. Throw is broken. Very nice. Nice. Here, uh, what, um, Numan's moving in and out, in and out, and then Flicker 2, right? Instead of telegraphing any outfox attempts, because, again, Farzine is usually running in to counter the outfox, right? So he's just changing up his options and trying to clip him. And now we finally get a back one that hits. How did this hit? Farzine whiffed the back one like last time. Farzine whiffed Victor's back one, but he goes into stance. And reacting to the stance transition, he hits a back one before Victor can do the move that goes low, right? So Farzine hit a button because Victor can't really get out of the stance outside of doing a little crouch dash. So, uh, really nice uh, reaction by Numan. Heat burst, maintain the advantage. Really, really nice. Sonic Fang, maintain advantage. Stomp! He just did one hit. This is good because the one hit stomp now is only minus 13. You can't launch it. So if Farzine read this, right, Numan would not have died, which is really good. And he has such a life lead, it's nice to not throw the game away. Instead, he just takes the low down. Oh, that was sick. One, two, one, two. Duck the throw, could have ducked the armor as well. One, two. If he did one, one, two, he wins. Down forward one, sidestep down forward one, he's chilling. Don't throw the game. Jab, down forward one, two, very nice, catching the expulsion. One round from resetting the bracket. Sonic Fang, ripping it, just trying to go for some hard reads here. Down one, but Victor putting out a lot of hitboxes, stopping these kind of cheese attempts. This is why attacking is so strong in Tekken 8 as well. Putting out hitboxes is very good. QCF2, nice. Oh! <laughs> Back one, flicker jabs, dying to Victor's down back four. Farzine really good at reading the continued aggression from Numan. And he pays for it. Look at the damage off of that counter hit down by four. Oh my god, he's poking. Up one. Heat burst was so smart there. He gets clipped. How did he get clipped? I have no explanation for how he got clipped here. Because your Korean back dash should duck, right? I don't know how he got hit. Down two. Down jab. This right weave has got to stop, Mr. Numan. Respectfully. Right weave too. Block punish. Well, it would have been high reward for sure. And he did need a comeback, to be fair. But man, that is so rough. The weaves are just never paying off. I don't think there's one situation where it paid off. Here we go. He's flowing again. This was pretty good, right? Running up doing the QCF2. Backdash outfox. Or just outfox by itself. Farzine gets a nice whiff punish, though, with the armor move. Back one, armor. Oh, Farzine has no heat. Numan, this is your round. This is your round, round Numan. Get off the wall. Damn. Eat six. Damn. He ate the extension here. And Farzine just ripped the up 1-1. One, one. Did that hit his outfought? What did this hit? Did he weave? No, he just sidestepped. He just sidestepped. <laughs> Sidestep gets clipped by up 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Huge damage. QCF2. Nice. Heat burst. Oh. <gasps> 
I thought the heat burst was so smart here. He took the plus two, does heat burst, but the two hits come out too fast. And now Farzine's on tournament point. Nice. No, oh, you, please stop weaving. Look at this, Outfox. He whiffed, but he whiffed. <laughs> Listen, man, Numan's probably a better player than I am, okay? Numan's a better player than I am. But I think that these weaves are unfortunate. Okay, down two. Down two heat burst. Nice. Maintain the pressure. I love this conference of Numan. He just ran up and did flicker back two. Or flicker two anyways, right? That's a lot of delayed timing. Victor could hit anything here, right? He could hit the down by four. He could do an expulsion. But he's very confident that Farzine's just going to block. I love that. Down two one. Okay. Nice. Oh, hey. Farzine has no heat. Half HP though. Oh, Numan's out of heat. This is Tekken 7.5. Scrapping. Love this. QCF1. <gasps> Beautiful block! Yes! Numan with the combos. I'm a Steve player. I'm biased. Sorry. Oh my god. Last hit situation. Down forward 1 2. <gasps> Farzine ducks! Farzine ducks the string! And how did this hit? Running 2! Stops the combo. Nice awareness on the wall. Throw is broken. 1 2 1 2. Oh my god. Oh my. oh, this is crazy. Oh my god. Numan! Believe! Oh, oh, not that hard! How did this all go wrong? Farzine wins the tournament with one pixel left, bro. Look at this. How did this hit? Oh, this was crucial. This running two. He jabbed. He just tried to do a jab. No, no, no. And that leads to this nasty combo. Nice adjustment. Throw is a great wake up choice there. 1-2-1 one, one is nice, but Farzine is just blocking, man. Running two. Sidestep two. Down forward one. Down two. Oh, my God. Spacing here. Oh! He did flicker. Back two. Correct read. Not enough HP. 100% a nerves issue. That is so tough. Numan played out of his mind, though. When he was really confident in those earlier games, he was dominant. Espe I think especially of the uh, first, these, this Paris round, right? Where he went up uh, two to one. He was playing so confident. He would go block punishable when he needed to, right? He was doing the armor move. We stopped seeing the armor move that was so effective. In that last situation, the armor move would have paid off heavy, right? He probably just didn't want to eat a down back four. This, man. Of course, can't take it away from Farzine losing his character Akuma at the end of Tekken 7, coming back as Victor, brand new character, and winning this Pakistan dojo. Very impressive for Farzine. This was a great tournament, and as you can see, the tier list is being shaken up as we speak, right? The top eight for this tournament um, did, was not dominated by Dragunov, Azucena, and Victor. I mean, Dragunov, Azucena, uh, and uh, Fang. I said Victor. I was looking at who actually got top two. So really, really incredible play. Let's look at the top eight now that the result is over. I didn't want to spoil it at first. But yeah, I think the uh, if StartGG will cooperate with me, the top eight was um, the John played King. Um, let's see if actually we can find it on Twitter. If you don't care about these results, by the way, thanks for sticking around. Please leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this kind of content. I want to find the top eight and just verify that the meta is really, really in the air. We really don't know. Uh, what is here we go? Look at this. Twitter. Thanks. Victor, Steve, June, King, Azusena, Alisa, and Fang, Devil Jin, Dragonov, and Paul, right? So, like, they're, the, the top characters are represented, but by far dominated top two, Victor and Steve. Undefeated Farzine, and Numan taking out a lot of big names. So, listen, I think we can all agree that Tekken 8 definitely needs patches. But this is evidence that the players matter. We still have to see what's going to happen. So let's not be too hasty to complain and, you know, get all upset. There's so much exciting Tekken to be seen, right? And I hope that you guys were able to appreciate this match as much as I was. This is really, really cool to see. Please leave a like, a comment. Again, if you enjoy this kind of content, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.